<laughs> hey, highbroadway.com, come on in, come on in. I didn't know, and this is excuse the uh, exercise here, but uh, I got another uh, two hours to go. No, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hi, I'm PJ Benjamin, I'm the wizard. And this is my dressing room. Thanks for coming on in. I do this for about 15 minutes before the show. It gets my juices going because I don't go on for an hour and 15 minutes. And if you're hanging out here, just like hanging in the dressing room, you go like, oh my God, I gotta go out there now. So I get it going by doing 15 minutes at least. And then I'll do some sit-ups and some uh, push-ups and some rolling on the roll bar. And it, uh, it's good, it's good. <laughs> what, what I do is also I always go over my lines too and I need something to sort of do it together so I'll kind of go like, uh, oh, is that you Alphabet? I didn't realize, I hope I didn't startle you. It's so hard to make out people's faces when I'm back there. So let's see, which is which? Alphabet, pleasure Alphabet. And you must be, I know it's a bit much, isn't it? But people expect this sort of thing so you have to give people what they want. I am a sentimental man who always, so I kind of just go over the lines for myself because I'm out there for 16 minutes and I gotta be shot out of a cannon and I gotta keep where the show is you know I was always a dancer my first show was uh, the first revival of pajama game in 1972 directed by George Abbott and I was the steam heat boy I got steam heat <laughs> this is uh, you know it's I never usually commit to a dressing room but I did this time because I knew I was here for a year so uh, my wife Louisa Flanagan an actress she's currently doing funny girl uh, she said let's really do something with your room so uh, I like uh, antiques I like shabby chic antiques I like antique toys so I started bringing things in like my puppet that's from like the 50s. These, these guys over here are uh, carnival chalkware. When you were a kid, you would knock down things uh, at a games at the carnivals and you would get these kind of chalkwares. And then you break them and then you would do hopscotch on the sidewalks of the old streets of Chicago where I grew up. This settee is Joel Gray's. He left this after he, <laughs> after he left the dressing room. I always follow him, Joel Gray. They, in fact, when I was, le I did Amos on Broadway for six and a half years, and now I'm doing Wicked following Joel. And they did uh, a send up of it when I was leaving the tour of Wicked, and it was Benjamin, PJ Benjamin, wherever Joel Gray's been, I slip right in. <laughs> this is a picture of my mom and dad in our tavern in Chicago that we had for 40 years, and I grew up in back of this tavern. And sometimes I'm in here in this room and I'm going, I'm the wizard in the biggest blockbuster hit on Broadway, and I grew up in a tavern in Chicago. Uh, this is, well, uh, to the bar. This is a little homage to the bar, but I never drink, never drink. This is only like for maybe guests after the show sometime. And uh, you can see it's mostly still here. <laughs> I listen to the show so I can see where we are, you know, like how the audience is reacting to everyone and uh, if, are the, are, is the audience laughing, are they older audience, younger audience, so then you kind of can get in the same wavelength as the other actors that are out there now. It's not just like, oh, like PJ doesn't go on for an hour and 15 minutes and I just sit back here. No, it's, it's almost harder to do a smaller role than it is to do a big role. Uh, that's what I find. It is. Because you, you got to score. You got to score. You have no margin for error. We got a great, great cast here. Terrific cast. I'm very, I'm very proud of this cast. I'm proud of this show. And the fact they just want to renew me for another year. And that's pretty cool. I know. I know. I'm going to almost just uh, wrap up here with this, with the makeup part of it. And uh, I put a little bit of, because sometimes they say maybe, maybe the wizard has a little green excelsior on the side so we give myself a little uh, of that kind of wc fields nose you know maybe i've been inviting a little bit but now i just do my hair and then i'm done with my makeup i grew up on the streets of chicago and i could have either either been in gangs or i could have been in theater because we, i was going to an all boys high school uh, St. Lawrence in Chicago and the all girls high school Lords needed some guys to do the show carousel and I went oh, I'm not gonna do that no, no, no. no I'm playing ball what is this acting acting well when I went into Lords high school and I saw the girls I was hooked <laughs> I hate to say it but I'm it was really kind of a whole new world for me you know beside the girls it was like this magical place that that I never knew existed. I mean, we never knew. We were, you know, Polish immigrants from the south side of Chicago, and there's this thing called theater. Theater! Not baseball, not sports, which I also love, 
but that that hooked me. And then uh, for my first push, then I started taking dance class and acting class, and they were looking for a replacement of, in the chorus of the show Promises, Promises that was coming through Chicago, and I was non-union, and there was the union people also, you know, and it got down to between me for one replacement for the Promises, Promises, it got down to between me and my dance teacher for the role. And we had, they said, okay, PJ and Mark, do the show, do the combination together. We want to watch both of you together. And I'm thinking to myself, this is my dance teacher. I can't, how can I, you know? But something told me, just go for it, just go for it. And I got it, I got the role. I became Union, I'm a proud member of Union for 40 years now. And I got the role, and then my um, dance teacher got the next one that opened up. <laughs> and then from then I went on and I moved to New York, and my first Broadway show was uh, Pajama Game, like I said, Steam Heat number. And uh, George Abbott gave me my first break, because I was in the ensemble, but he said, that man's gonna do Steam Heat. And so then an agent saw me, and then I started doing lead roles. And this Wicked is my 10th Broadway show. I, I told you, I've been in the business 40 years. I've never seen this. I've never, I don't care what show I will do after this for the next 40 years. I have never seen this kind of reaction. I, I, you know, even like, you know, you asked me earlier, what is it about Wicked? I'm still trying to figure it out. I mean, I kind of know, but that's what I think keeps bringing people back and back and back to the show, because you see different things and you get different things from the story. And Gregory Maguire's story is absolutely sensational because it's complete. It's totally thought out. It's in a, You come into this theater at the Gershwin and you're like in a world, a whole different world you didn't know existed. Like I didn't know theater existed when I was growing up on the southwest side of Chicago. Come see Wicked. It's a different world. Come in. Here's the wizard getting together. Uh, I want you to introduce you to Jason Fiorango, the Hello. wizard's assistant. Let's see, this is what he does. Then he kills me. <laughs> <laughs> These shoes were made for me. I love that. Before mine were made for me, I was using Joel you know, Benverine's shoes and George Hearns' shoes. But then I got these made. It's a feel-good show. It's a feel-good show, and there's a surprise ending, which I'm not going to give away, and that makes it even more of a feel-good show. And that's, uh, it's like watching um, Forrest Gump or something, you know, it, those shows that, that give you a good feeling, you know, and that's, this, that's what this is. I like that. I never asked for this or planned it in advance. I was middle blown here by the winds of chance. I never saw myself as a Solomon or Socrates. I knew who I was, one of your dime a dozen mediocrities, then suddenly I'm here, respected, worship it. Okay. <laughs> I just kind of go through it for myself a little bit. You know, I just got to be able to be right out there. This is John, John, our sound person. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> he has to make sure my mic cord doesn't show. But he secretly always wanted to be a barber. <laughs> <laughs> my life's calling. Am I on? Your mic's good. We're good? Yep. Okay, oh, that's good. Good show. <laughs> okay, here I go. I'm off to see the wizard. Wait a minute. I am the wizard. <laughs>